Thanks, David. And just to let everybody know, the website for those weather stations, because I saw a lot of interest in that, was is actually Mezzo West, which is M E S O W E S T dot Utah, U T A H dot E D U. And that actually gives you pretty accurate um, weather information for the areas that you live. And and then there's also the other thing that I didn't mention um, earlier also was that PG&E is also looking at installing high definition cameras, uh, 600 more uh, by 2022. We've, there's a few here in Lake County and last year they did install one more and they're looking at installing much more than that for the citizens of Lake. Um, going back to the uh, public safety power shutoff, the um, once we're able to notify customers that the, their power is back on, that kind of that pretty much concludes uh, the PSPS. And David already alluded to this. This is a strategy of last resort, and it's not the only thing that PG&E is doing currently to try and harden the system to make our infrastructure safer and more resilient to combat these uh, the changing uh, climate. Um, and there's a couple things that you may have already seen in your communities where uh, PG&E might have uh, vegetation uh, crews out uh, inspecting the lines and um, trimming the vegetation around our electric electricity lines. You may have seen helicopters or crews going through, changing out poles, making them more resilient, installing metal and other types of material poles so they're less likely to burn during a wildfire. You may have also seen a lighter, thicker, uh, whitish gray color line, which is what we call tree wire, but they're reconductoring lines in the high fire threat zones um, to make them tighter, but also to um, uh, prevent them from arcing. And if you notice, the older lines might be a little skinnier. Um, and when the trees run in and, or vegetation runs into those, they're more likely to snap and start sparking. These new tree lines actually uh, the only downfall about this is when a tree does fall on those lines, it actually, if the tree's heavy enough, it'll take down a bunch of poles, but the, but the actual line does not snap, which is a lot safer, or it, it, it's less likely to snap, which is safer for, the, for our communities. Um, the other thing that they have been looking at, we were talking to some of the, uh, our customers here in the room, PG&E has been doing beta projects for undergrounding. Um, in certain areas of their territory. Uh, they're looking at that, that's on the table. Um, <clears throat> and, and one other thing is that every time that we've um, implemented one of these public safety power shutoffs, we have been able to get better at doing them in communicating in just internally and externally. But one of the things that I do wanna mention is last year in 2018, um, October 2018, when we did execute the first PSPS, there was around 12,500 customers that were impacted by that PSPS. And then in November, when we started to uh, the protocol to, to conduct another PSPS, um, our engineers and our team were able to reconfigure and sectionalize the lines so that only 6, 000, around 6,500 customers are going to be impacted in November, which is good news that they're able to figure those types of um, things out with our, uh, with our technology. Um, so that's kind of uh, a quick uh, update on the public safety power shutoff. So I'm going to give it back to Director Comiskey so we can do some questions and answers.